It's fair to say that last episode didn't exactly go to plan. We were humiliated, and well, today we're going to try and make amends. Juventus and AC Milan. I really didn't pick the best games to come back for from that perspective, did I? Yeah, today, today's going to be tough. How's it going, folks? And welcome back to Atalanta. Today is episode number three of this new series. I say new series. How long is the series new for? I feel like it's still in its infancy. We're still finding our feet. We're still finding our groove. And well, since we're last here, we've played a handful of games in the league. It's towards the end of November already. And with 12 games played of the season, you can see we are currently up in third. But with today's opposition sitting in fifth and second, we are going to be tested today. Now, of course, if you watched last episode, you know what happened there. It wasn't good against Napoli. We needed to bounce back. And on the whole, we've had some good little performances. We kicked things off with a game against Lecce. We won this one 4-1. You can see Pasalic getting a couple of goals. A player who's been on the fringes of the team, but given his recent form, really has forced his way into first team contention. He will probably start today. And well, after that one good win... Another good win, this time a 5-0 win against Spezia. Uh, Raspadori picking up four in this game. Coita also getting on the score sheet. I feel like Raspadori came in and I was a little bit concerned we'd overpaid for him, but at least with his performances on the pitch, it looks like he's going to be worth each and every penny. 10 goals to his name in 12 league games, a 7.37. And alongside him, Coita has been putting in some good performances. Guiri missing a little bit of football, having got sick. And well, in his place, uh, the Malian international forward is looking rather good. Obviously, I felt like we'd maybe overpaid for him at £11 million. But right now, he is operating as a really super option for us to have. Three assists, four goals a play, showing that he does have a little bit of creativity about him. And uh, yeah, he was good in this game as well. Unfortunately, in this run of easier games, we did drop two points against Monza, a newly promoted team, a team that I felt like we should do well against. We created chances. We didn't take them enough. And to be honest, we probably were second best in this game. Nevertheless, a good defensive performance. Toloi, club captain, putting in a really good performance in this one. He has the highest average rating in our team, leading by example. I mean, you can see here, two player of the matches for a centre-back in nine games with only one assist. It's not like he's been a set-piece merchant, you know, who's getting man of the match off just scoring headers on corners. No, this man has been really, really good and a little bit of a surprise package, perhaps. So those previous three games marked the end of October and into November, a month where we don't have too many games we went. Most recently, taking on Lazio. You can see here, Mail got an early goal for us, cutting in from the left-hand side uh, for this game, playing full strength, but going back to the more defensive system. And it worked really, really well. Darun doubled our lead in the 73rd minute. Lazio pushing men forward. And in the end, a really, really good, important win for us. Lazio no slouches by any means. You can see, again, really, really good team performance. And a male who scored out on the left-hand side, a little bit of a weird option, really. We've got all these left-footed players I brought in to play on the left because I've always been someone who's been kind of funny about playing someone who's right-footed on the left. Is that just me? I feel like with inside forwards and wingers, I'm less bothered about it. But from a defensive point of view with defensive wingers, I've kind of always considered it an important thing. But so far, I mean, you can see here, he's played out on the right, he's played out on the left. When he's played on the left, 7.6 rating. It's not really impacting his performances so far. And it's for that reason that at least right now, he's kind of pick pipping uh, Pellegrini so that left attacking kind of mid position, if we just scroll and find Pellegrini here, you can see the head-to-head -head comparison, arguably not as good, but just one of those things in Football Manager where sometimes a player performs and you just can't justify dropping them. And yeah, Mail pretty much become the starting left winger, at least for now. So now that you're all caught up, shall we get into some matches? We've got two today. We need to focus immediately. Juventus the first opposition. In terms of team, this is what we're going to go with. Playing the three at the back with the more defensive midfielder, the more conventional conservative system, perhaps. Musso in goal, not really a surprise. He has locked down that position for us. Out on the right-hand side, Toloi starts with Demiral and DeMarco alongside. Of course, DeMarco um, not had the best few months at the club. He has been back in the Itali Italian national team, but for us, he's not really wowed us so far. He has had some issues of injury as well, which has been a bit of a, a shame. Sent off against Inter got injured long-term. He's back in the team today. I feel like he's still got to prove himself. Of course, on £75,000 a week, he is the big earner. He needs to start showing up. 
Nothing too crazy going on in the midfield. Hatterbor has kind of locked down the right-hand-sided position for us. Mail coming on the left. Pasalic, I mentioned his goal scoring. He is going to play as the centre mid on attack over Malinowski. And in the midfield, we're sticking with Froehler and Darun, two of the more experienced players, two of the better players, at least on paper, but two players who I feel like I need to see a little bit more of. And I feel like a game like today is a chance for them to show us if they are actually worthy of keeping around slightly longer term. Because I do look at them, and considering some of the sales we've made already, maybe they'd be the next on the chopping block. Up top for today's game, we are going to go with Raspadori alongside Gueri. Nothing too crazy going on there. I've talked about Raspadori. I've talked about Koita. In terms of Gueri, slightly less impressive. Only two assists in his last five games, but a player who... I feel like we need to be patient with. It's important to remember he is a younger player adapting from, from a foreign country. He started the season really, really well, but you can kind of see from his form in the last 20 how he has slowed down a little bit. He did have a very good performance, to be fair, against Lecce, but it's against these higher caliber opposition where I really need him to be the more creative of the two strikers. So getting into this one, a little bit of a test. Juventus currently flying very high, but trailing into Milan. They are in second. They're going to want to catch up with Inter and well to do that they are going to have to dispatch of us today they are going with a 4-4-2 of course Pogba in their team with all the latest transfers they've got Vlahovic up top who is well he has been the best striker in the league so far this year so we've got to be wary of him um, I kind of said it last episode when we took on a 4-2-3-1 that we hadn't really played this shape before 4-4-2 is not a common formation to see in Italy it feels like everyone in Italy plays a five at the back so a little bit of a venture into the unknown yet again today but of course Juventus, a, a very talented squad. The likes of Pogba, Di Maria, Cuadrado at the back post. We've got to be at our best. And well, early on, defensively, the back foot is initiated. Although Mail is going to win the ball there really nicely and get it forward to Guiri. This is where we might have a chance. Their wing backs pushing forward, Juventus. It's going to be a two on two at the back. Can Raspadori and Guiri get the kind of one over on Bremer and Bonucci? We're going to find out, I feel like, in due course. But at least for now, we're knocking the ball around nicely here. Guiri turns his man, finds himself one-on-one. -on -one, and I'll tell you what, if he could have found a finish there, I would have got rid of all the complaints and everything I said earlier. He would have redeemed himself. Unfortunately, the effort goes just wide of the post, but we might have another chance here. Raspadori and Guiri linking up really nicely. Mail on the overlap to Froehler, Pasalic, Raspadori, his efforts blocked. I mean, we're creating stuff against Juventus, but much like the game against Napoli, we need to be clinical in these games. We need to be taking the opportunities that come our way. So far, that's not really happened. The Siglio on the near side, throwing it forward to Moise Keane. Di Maria now with it. I tell you what, Juventus with Cuadrado and De Siglio on either side, they've got some scary players in the wide area. And well, they've worked it in from the wide area. And Vlahovic, we've talked about him already. He's a little bit of a fox in the box. He's a player who's always going to finish stuff that comes his way. And that was very, very simple. A throw in. I mean, it was worked nicely, to be fair. Let's give them some credit. And, uh, well, Di Maria's run here was nice. Froehler not covering himself in glory. And, uh, well, a relatively simple finish at the end of it. The bizarre thing here is we're a goal down. I don't really feel like we've played that badly. Juventus, they've had the one shot on target that's gone in. We're edging out possession. We've had, well, some chances of our own. Um, but ultimately, we do find ourselves a goal down. And we are going to need to, at some point, go for this game more. Especially as the home team. I feel like there's pressure on us to do more. You can really see here, Juventus have not created a lot. They've had that one opportunity that was like a, a crazy amount of XG. Because it was a tap-in from so close. Besides that, we've steadily been chipping away, but unable to find a breakthrough. Of course, we do have plenty of subs that we can make. Darun did pick up an injury in the first half, so I'm going to take him off. I'm going to bring in Edison, who's kind of been the, the go-to box-to-box midfielder. He's not been amazing, to be fair, to start the year, but I feel like in this kind of match here, we need him. Elsewhere, I hate the fact that both defensive wingers are on bookings, especially knowing how Juventus have been working things down the wings. So I think with that in mind, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to move DeMarco into the defensive winger position and bring in Badia Chile at the back. Out on the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Zappa Costa. I don't feel like we've really talked about Zappa Costa. He's the kind of player who I'm kind of keen to sell on as soon as possible. I had no interest in him in the summer. He's the second highest earner at the club. He's 29 years old and he's not even our best right-sided player. But you know what? We're going to give him a chance today. Three subs made early on, of course. We still have a further two in our back pockets. I'm going to hope the changes in the midfield reinvigorate us going into the second half. Okay, 15 minutes into this half. 
nothing is happening. And with that in mind, I think we've got to go on the attack. We've got to go on the offensive. Now, the good news for us is... It's a relatively simple change to make here. Um, we have lots, lots of flexibility in the centre mid position, meaning that we can change from the more defensive to attacking variant without having to make any changes. Pasolac is going to move forward and play as a shadow striker. Really, really well suited to that. In the midfield, Edison is now going to take up a slightly more defensive role within the team, with Freuler continuing to play as the roaming playmaker. I will say now, Freuler... He's not the perfect roaming playmaker, but I feel like 14 passing and 14 vision is acceptable. And he's just kind of our most well-rounded centre mid to fill in this kind of position. Um, do still have two subs. I'm going to make one here. In fact, I'm going to make two here. You know what? Xerxes and Koita, on you come. Our two starting strikers haven't been amazing. I'm going to bring in the plan B. I was going to call them the A team, but I guess they're the B team. Um, we'll see what they can do. Xerxes is the complete forward. Koita is the advanced forward. That little and large combo. Something that we don't really get with Guiri and Raspadori. Going to give us a bit of a, a, maybe a plan B option as, well, Juventus looking to play it out from the back and we're we'll, uh, continuing to look for those overlaps in the wide areas. Zappa Costa needs to do some defending for us. He's under the microscope. Doesn't put in a tackle, affords some time and space. Badia Chile, 17 jumping reach. He leaps like a salmon to get it away, but the ball not away from danger. Weston McKenney bringing it forward and shooting it just over the bar. I mean, with 15 minutes left here, I'm going to go to attacking. I'm also tempted just to go a little bit more direct with how the we play. But to be honest, against Juventus, albeit at home, I don't feel like this has been that bad of a performance. Of course, it could quickly change in the last 10 minutes. But we're hanging on in the game. You've got to be in it to win it. They've not been able to break us down too often. And I feel like we've kind of been a match for them. And well, we could have chances because... There's still time. Ball whipped in. Freuler in the middle gets chopped down by Bremer. That has to be a penalty referee. He doesn't need to go visit the screen. He knows it's a penalty. I know it's a penalty. Bremer knows it's a penalty. Just give it, ref. Just give it. It has to be. He's chopped a man from behind. Penalties given. 10 minutes left. A chance to draw even here. DeMarco is going to take it. Our little set-piece wizard at the back. He steps up. He smashes it into the top corner. It's his first goal for the club. And, uh, well, not a bad time to get it. It's 1-1 in this game. And just as I was saying, 1-0 is an okay result. I'll tell you what, 1-1 is a bloody good result. And I kind of want to keep on the attack now. Look, I might live to regret it, but with five minutes left, I just don't really want to change anything. I feel like we've done well in this game. On the balance of play, we deserve a point. And you know what? A point is what we're going to take. Juventus have been one of the big, scary teams this year. And whilst, you know what, we weren't necessarily at our best, I think we did more than enough to deserve at least a point from that game. I'm proud of the work put in, and that hopefully now sets us up nicely for our next game against AC Milan. Yes, that is in a week's time. There is no rest for the wicked. You can see we will retain a three-point gap to Juve in second, but a big game coming up. A chance that if we lose this next one, we could drop outside the top four. And uh, well, with that in mind, shall we get on the bus to Milan? I'll, I'll see you in a mo. Let's see if we can keep this going. I feel, I feel good today. Okay, folks, we are back for the game against Milan. And while we're at that point in the season where heads are starting to roll, you can see here Napoli have sacked their manager. Jose Mourinho has been sacked by Roma. And in his place, Bielsa's come in. So the good news for us is if there was any risk of this save going majorly south, which I'm hoping there's not going to be, um, we're not going to be the first manager sacked. This year. So let's look at the positives there. Let's also look at the positives in the league table. We're in fourth. We're in a good position here, but we do need to beat Milan. We've had a week to rest up. Let's talk about the team selection. So unfortunately for this game, Hatterbor is out suspended. But besides that, it's pretty much a full strength team available. That said, I am going to rotate things just a little bit. You can see Melaninovsky is going to come in for Pasalic in the center of the midfield. And of course, as I mentioned, we don't have Hatterbor. So as a result, Zappa Costa out on the right. Besides that, though, still a very good team here. But away from home, I'm a bit scared of Rafa Liao. And to be real for a second, can you blame me? This man is terrifying. I'm a bit worried that Milan are going to play him out on the left-hand side, cutting in on his right foot. If they do do that, uh, I fear for Toloi because he won't be able to keep up with Rafa Liao on the wing. It's, it, it could end badly. So we're heading to the San Siro here, taking on one of our big rivals. Of course, Atalanta and Milan do have this big rivalry. And uh, my worst fears are realised. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. 
That is what Napoli did against us. And we all know what happened last time. So worth noting going into this game that Milan are the favourites, not just because they're at home, but because they probably do have a slightly better side than ours. As good as our start to the season's been, and I think we've been quite plucky as an underdog, I do fear that we're leaning a bit too heavily on Raspadori's goals to be successful. So with that in mind, I'm looking for Gueri to try and get on the score sheet really today. Um, what I would say, you know, given the fact we've now been at the club for the best part of a few months, we've been able to really get to grips with the team. I like the players that we brought in. I think they've contributed nicely. And I really like the football that we're playing as well, we knock the ball around and score that. We carve teams open with some really nice passes at times. That is a very, very nice example. I don't feel like you necessarily see them when we're taking on all these bigger teams in live commentary episodes. But goals like that just make this system fun to watch. Guiri wandering into that wide area, plays it inside to Froehler. Bale picks up the ball, plays it forward to Guiri, who then hammers it home. I've said I wanted to see him on the score sheet. It's taken him less than two minutes. And well, I don't want to get too carried away just yet, but there's another highlight. Less than five minutes into this game, it is all action early on. DeMarco is the wide centre-back making these wide runs, just giving Mail an option. And while trying to pick out a rather ambitious ball, which was read nicely, gets back into position. Then we look to build it out again. Looks like we're winning the battle of the midfield at this early point in play. And um, we do have a few kind of extra players, I feel like, functioning in the midfield. The wide centre-backs, the way they step up, does allow us to maybe outnumber the Milan uh, midfield. Although, saying all of that, they're whipping the ball over and this is where we can be caught out without natural fullbacks. That's where the ball falls to Sandro Tonali, who hammers it home. It's 1-1 after three minutes. This is... One of the downsides of our system, right here, I'd love to see the wide centre-back getting in and marking this man. Instead, the three centre-backs caught, perhaps a tad narrow, just lacking players in the middle. Still, issues to solve, shall we say. Uh, yeah, 1-1. One, one. Now, I'm not going to panic just yet, but besides the goal that we've scored, we've really not created a lot so far in this game. Halfway through the first half, but Malinowski is a set-piece wizard, and for a second, I thought he was about to score a free kick from miles away. Unfortunately, it goes just over the crossbar, but maybe another set piece here. Ball whipped in by Malinowski. Doesn't beat the first man, which isn't what we want to see. But Froehler there to mop up the pieces. Gives it back to Musso. Of course, we are well, encouraging our players to play out from the back. We have our instructions set to distribute to the centre-backs. We want to work the ball into the wider areas. Well, we're going to see that here. Raspadori snatches the ball away from Tamori and squeezes it in off the post. If Froehler was at fault for the goal that we conceded against Juventus, Tamori has just done his best Froehler impression. I'm not entirely sure how that fell our way. Definitely against the run of play, but I am not going to complain. Zappacosta's ball there was not great, but Tamori, don't know why he didn't just put it out into touch, but I ain't going to complain. Raspadori, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, really, really good finish in off the post reinstates our lead in a game that, I'll be honest, there's not been that many chances in, but so far, both teams taking opportunities. Oh, well, Milan are going to seek to take an opportunity here. Teo Hernandez playing it down this left-hand side, gets to the byline, puts it in. We should have conceded there. I'm not ashamed to say it. We should have conceded there. That is a horrific miss. Unfortunately for us, Half-time has not come yet. Milan have the ball. Teo Hernandez waltzing forward. No one closes him down. In the end, Musso has to make a rather heroic stop. And with three minutes left of the clock, there might still be a little bit more defending needed. Brahim Diaz puts it in. It's headed away by Darren Miral. Could we catch them on the break? Raspadori turns on the afterburners. Run, Raspadori, run! Only one man to aim for in the middle for now. He attempts to hold it up unsuccessfully. And sadly for us, it's going to fizzle out into nothing, but yet another highlight to end the half. And the beautiful, beautiful man that is Olivier Giroud has just scored from a set piece. A little bit frustrating, isn't it? Who was marking him? I'm gonna, I want to say who was marking him. Apparently, Froehler was the closest man. Whether or not you can describe what Froehler's done there as marking, I think is perhaps up for debate. Unfortunately for us, at halftime, it's 2 2. I'm not happy. You have an ability to make a difference. The strikers have played well. Males played well on the right. DeMarco's played well, to be fair, on the left. He doesn't get the credit, but it is 2-2. Zappa Costa's on a 6.4. You know what? Get him off the pitch. We're going to move uh, Male out onto the right-hand side. I'm then going to go with the exact same change we did before. Badia Chile into the wide centre-back. DeMarco 
moves into the defensive winger position. Is anyone else getting deja vu? I feel like I make this change every single game. I mean, Milan came into this game as the favourites. That said, having been ahead twice, how can you not feel disappointed to, for it now to be 2-2 and, well, for Milan to perhaps have a chance to get a quick double whammy? Teo Hernandez brings it forward. It's blocked away initially. Might still be more needed to be done here as, well, Rafael has an effort. It's parried straight into the path of Brahim Diaz. Fourth goal of the season for the Spanish playmaker. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to... I should have made this change sooner, really. I'm going to move to Marco and Mail just to play as wingbacks for us here. Start their initial position a little bit deeper. Hopefully, do a little more defensively. And you know what? Whilst we're here, Darun, off you come. Do not like having players on a booking on the pitch. Going to make those changes. It's too little too late for now. But I am hoping just by dropping the defensive wingers deeper... It's maybe going to allow us to stop Milan tearing us apart in the wide areas. In hindsight, maybe could have made this change sooner. I will say the total combined XG of the two teams is two. And yet we've had five goals in this game so far. Both teams have been extremely clinical going forward. And while we're going to hope that that trend is going to end here, but it may not because Rafa Liao, well, he very nearly scored. Who was that? It was Mayol who put in an absolutely heroic tackle there to get back. Still a corner to deal with, though. We've already conceded from one set piece, and we're going to concede from another. It's Giroud again. It's Giroud again. It's two goals in the first five minutes of the second half. Olivier Giroud, he's so handsome, isn't he? How can I be upset? I mean, I can be upset. He's unmarked to the back post again. Are we not learning our lessons here, chaps? It's really not good enough. Although, you know, a response here. Hope starts to, well, maybe be restored. Pasolic, Freuler. Toloi. We've not created much in this second half yet, but we're only 10 minutes into it. And well, maybe an opportunity here as Malinowski gives it to Guiri, bursts through, and he hammers it into the bottom corner. It's 4-3. I'll tell you what, you're almost always guaranteed goals with this Antalanta side. We don't seem to understand the concept of defending, but we're quite good at that whole attacking shebang. So uh, I, get, I guess it works. I mean, it's entertaining, if nothing else. I, I think I'm entertained. I'm also in pain. 20 minutes left here, Raspadori's not at the best of games. I'm going to take him off for Koita. Elsewhere, mail on a booking scares me, but I think I've just got to keep faith. Freuler's not been amazing in the middle. I'm going to bring in Grassi, I think, for him. Grassi, a more creative option, not necessarily quite as good defensively as some of our other players. We occasionally stick in this kind of deeper-lying Roman playmaker role. But you know what? 13 passing, 13 vision. He's the, the master of most trades. Oh, no, not Matt. He's the master of no trades, Jack of some. I've completely butchered the phrase. Basically, he's an average footballer. <sighs> it's not my best performance, this, is it? I feel like when you look at Milan's players one for one, they have just got that extra bit of quality. And, well, they've shown that going forward fairly consistently in this game. Brahim Diaz, Teo Hernandez, crosses it in Giroud, nearly has a hat-trick of headers. And then we give away a penalty. <laughs> I want to cry. I assume this is going to be given as a penalty. I'm fine. I'm not having a breakdown. Everything's fine. I want to say, please, miss, but it's going to go in, isn't it? Teo Hernandez steps up. Musso, can you work some magic? He can't work some magic. It's 5-3. Malinowski, corner. I'm starting to believe. Demiral, back post. Guiri scored again. What is happening here? It's 5-4. With these episodes, I've been trying to keep them kind of around 25 minutes. This is going to end up being a longer episode at this rate because we've had nine goals and there's still 10 minutes left. Okay, look, not long left in this game, seven minutes. I think at this point, it, it's fine just to go super mega attacking, right? At, the, at this point, I'm allowed to just throw men forward and go for it and see what we can do. Let's look to, for the overlaps, but also to hit the early crosses. Playing out from the back, more direct. Um... When distributing, we can go to the fullbacks as well as the centre backs now. Press forward, just chase, just hunt. There's seven minutes left. I've made all these changes. Watch there be no more highlights now. I've just realised they are down a man on the left hand side. How long have they been down a man through injury? I don't know. Demarco, you can just go and play as like an attacking winger now. And Pasolic, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna overload that side of the pitch. Malinowski, go be an advanced playmaker. Everyone just attack. We gotta throw men forward. We might as well. Badia Chile. Why to everyone's on attack? Just put everyone on attack. This is the play. Six minutes of added time. Is anything going to happen? Is there one last goal? No. Why did I make any tactical changes? What a, what a monumental waste of time. At the same time, though, B 
bit of a classic game today. Guiri has got a hat trick and we've not won. I feel bad for him. So unfortunately, with that result, we are going to slip down to fifth place. Of course, the aim for this year is just a top six finish. Guiri ends his goal drought. Got man of the match as well as ending his goal drought. He's got to be a happy bunny, even if we've not won. Unfortunately for us, stupid sexy Giroud and his back post headers have really done us over today. Unsurprisingly, that game was considered the key match and the game with the best viewing um, of the day. I mean, 5-4 doesn't come around very often. It just sucks to be on the, the losing end of it. So looking forward to next time. Not entirely sure when we're going to be back just yet, but I imagine it's going to be in the January transfer window. In terms of our upcoming games, we have got some games I would consider perhaps a little easier. Verona have been a surprise package so far. Their media prediction of 12th is being well, defied by their actual performances. They're currently up in fourth. We might dip into the transfer market because we have got well, close to £11 million to spend and some wage budget. Anyway, folks, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode today. A bonkers couple of games. That one against Milan, I don't quite know what to make of. I feel like we maybe need to come up with a plan when we come up against teams who do like to operate in the wide areas. Defensive wingers do seem to not be working quite as well as I'd hope against those kind of systems. So maybe something to go and think about. If you've got any thoughts with regards to how we're playing the matches you've seen today, let me know them down in the comments. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it as always. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.